Hello and welcome to another example video. This question is fairly recent. It's from March 2020, right? And uh, it's a question about thermistor and how thermistor is being used for direct sensing. All right, so let's read the question first. You are asked to, on figure 7.1, which is this graph axis, to sketch the temperature characteristics of a negative temperature coefficient, thermistor. Label the axis with quantity and unit. Okay, let's pause a bit and think about this negative temperature coefficient thermistor. What does it mean? So this negative temperature coefficient, which is the thermistor that is in your syllabus, says that when temperature increase, so let's say it gets hotter and hotter, your resistance decrease because the electrons have more energy to travel. All right. So this means uh, this will be temperature, the x-axis. I prefer to write full because they didn't label any physical quantity for me in the question at this point. All right, if you want to put comma theta or comma t, that is okay. Maybe you put degree Celsius. And the other side would be thermistor, so it has to be a resistor. So resistance, okay, then maybe this is R. I guess the unit you could put ohm la, or kilo ohm. Okay, and this one will decrease and it will decrease with a decreasing gradient. So it's getting less and less deep over time, something like this. Okay, so you might be wondering where is the two marks, all right? So one mark will be when uh, temperature increase, resistance decrease. Okay, one mark will be the shape. It has to be decreasing gradient and not touching axis okay and labels so this last mark is easy to to lose la. either your shape is wrong maybe i don't know you decide to draw this shape Okay, or maybe you've forgotten to label or for some reason you go and have an X and Y axis intercept, which is weird. Okay, because if you intercept the X axis, you're telling me that there's a certain temperature where there's no resistance at all. And if you intersect the this axis, well, we kind of don't know what happens because normally this axis would be zero Kelvin. Okay, but this unit is also acceptable. So make sure you don't touch the axis. All right, next unless you have enough information. So we draw a general one. So here you can see this thermistor, this is the thermistor, is connected as shown in figure 7.2, this one. Okay, we know this is a thermistor because it has this symbol that looks like a spoon. <laughs> okay, and the voltmeter is connected across the other resistor. And now, what happens to the thermistor? Let's go. Temperature of thermistor is increased. Ooh. So if temperature of thermistor is increased, resistance of thermistor, what do you think will happen to the resistance? You already sketched the graph, right? So you know when temperature increase, nah, nah, the resistance will drop. Think of all the majority charge carriers. NTCs are... This kind of thermistors and TCs are normally semiconductors. Ah, not right for you lah. Semiconductors. Okay. When we enter into chapter twenty-five, you will understand band theory and how semiconductor works. But generally, the electrons are lower energy level. You want them to help you carry energy. You must give them energy. So what do you do? Increase temperature. They have more energy. Okay. So here we will say we'll start off with this one first temperature increase resistor decrease all right let me let me change the pen thickness a bit so you can see clearly all right let's go so that will be our first point we can say as the temperature of the thermistor is increased it's resistance decreases okay its resistance decreases so when the resistance decrease what happens 
Let's look at the diagram. This RT drop, RT for thermistor. This other resistor is fixed, meaning this resistor will take a larger share of the total potential difference. Okay, so I can say that the um, a greater or larger proportion of R is in the fixed resistor or greater proportion, I guess the greater proportion of the total resistance, this is better, is in the fixed resistor. All right. So what does this mean? Eh? Well, let's write an equation for this voltmeter reading. Lah. This voltmeter reading takes a ratio of R because it's connected across this uh, resistor R out of R plus RT. And you're going to times by, let's say this EMF is E, so you'll multiply by E. Okay, so think about this. When your RT decrease, so this RT will drop. When this RT drops, what happens to the value of the voltmeter reading? RT becomes smaller and smaller. Okay, this number becomes smaller, so this fraction becomes larger. 1 over 4 is smaller than 1 over 3. So when the denominator becomes smaller, this fraction becomes larger, meaning the voltmeter reading will increase. And the voltmeter reading increase because the voltmeter reading increase because this R has a larger part, a larger share of the total resistance. So this is what I mean by greater proportion of the total resistance is inside the fixed resistor because why the resistance of the thermistor decreases so rt got less r is like i win now lo. r be like i won because my neighbor is decreasing my influence is stronger all right so you can now make your conclusion on the vote reading of the vote meter you can say Hence, voltmeter reading increases. Okay, so always look at the proposition of the voltmeter and decide. Oh, this is an interesting graph, never seen before. Let's read. The variation of the fractional change in length, del x over x, so this one, and the fractional change in resistance del R over R in the strain gauge is shown in figure 7.3. So whenever we say fractional change, right, it's actually just a very bougie, <laughs> pretentious, very, it's a dif different way of saying percentage change. Of course, we didn't multiply by 100%, but these are all percentage change. So del x over x is percentage change in length. Just like del r over r is percentage change in resistance. Okay, notice a bit small, so I make it bigger. So this one is percentage change in resistance. All right, and another thing that you shouldn't forget or is all the prefix here, uh, guys. Don't forget there are prefixes here. If you forget, then good luck to you. All right, let's continue. Next part. The unstrained resistance of the gauge is 120 ohm. So this one is the initial unstrained. Ma. Unstrained here is initial. So the initial value of R is 120 ohm. I'm just going to draw a box here. This is my R. Okay. Calculate the new resistance of the gauge when it is extended to a strain of 0 0.02. Hmm. What is strain? Ah? You remember from your AS? GG or miss. I have to remember AS stuff. Ah. Little, little bit. Little bit. Okay, look, even if you can't remember, you should at least know strain is some ratio, right? And since resistance is taken already, 
Then resistance is taken already. The only one is this one, low. Okay, so it has to be related to related to this ratio. But of course, it will be better for your brain if you actually know that strain is defined as extension per unit original length, which coincidentally can be equal to del x over x. Because del x is change in length, and change in length is extension. Okay, and this uh, original length is the original length x. Okay, uh? so from here, you can say del x over x is 0 0.020. From the graph, we can read del r over r. Let's go and stare at the graph. 0 0.020 okay again note the prefix 10 to the power of negative 2 0 0.020 is equal to 2.0 times 10 to the power of negative 2 meaning to say we are going to read the graph when your del x over x is this uh, this 2.0 let me zoom in ding 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 don't lag Come on. Okay, there we go. So if you zoom in, you notice that this is exactly at half a box. Paper 5 don't let you plot half a box, but paper 4, you have to read to half a box because it's a theory paper. Okay, so this is half a box and this is 9. Don't forget the prefix. So 9 times 10 to the power of negative 2, this one. Okay, so this is your del R over R. So we're going to write that down. I would say that del R over R is 9 times 10 to the power of negative 2. From here, can we find the new resistance? I guess we need to find the change in resistance first, right? So to find the change in resistance, I will take 9 times 10 to the power of negative 2, multiply by the value of R, which happens to be in this box here, which is 120 ohm. So I'm going to multiply this by 120. Okay, 9 times 12 is 108. 108, 1,800 divided by 100, so 10.8. 10.8 ohm. So the increase or the change in resistance, okay, so if you don't do calculus or you're not familiar with this, whenever we write delta, is change in resistance. That's why they call this one fractional change. Del R over R bar. All right. So this is a change in resistance. Is this much? But, but is this the final resistance? Of course not. So hence, final resistance will be equal to 10.8 plus the initial resistance of 120. So this will give you a grand total of 100 and 30.8 ohm. You can put 131, you can put 130, 2 to 3 SF law. Okay, so I'll put I'll stick to 130 lah because the answer is given to 2 SF here. Lah. Okay, but make sure you show your final form first, lah. then only you round to the nearest SF. So don't worry when they give you like very weird looking graph, some fraction here, some fraction there. You just gotta calm down a bit and think about. Oh, what does the fraction represent? For example, this one tells you, okay, I see, uh, I explain a bit. If the fraction times the power of negative 2 is 2, so this is 2%. When you see this, it means that the change in length is 2%. Okay, so what this tells you, this coordinate here, this coordinate here, it tells you when length change 2%, Miss, how you know it's 2%? Nah, 0.02. Lo. It is the fractional change. Ma. That's why we like to use fraction, because it tells us about percentage. And percentage is something that everyone can brain, na, right? When length change 2%, you look at del R over R, resistance. Resistance changes by... 9%. This also explains why they use 10 to the negative 2. 
because that is when you look at this number you can think of percentage all right so taking your time to look at the graph give yourself a few minutes to breathe and calm down is very helpful okay and also make sure that you understand what they're looking for they're looking for the new resistance so you can find the change in resistance because you know when the length changed by 2% or 0 0.02, the change in resistance will be 0 0.09 or 9 times 10 power negative 2. So if the percentage change in resistance is 9%, then you want to find the absolute change. You will multiply by the original value of R. Original value of R is 120. Put inside, you get 10.8. So to find the final resistance, you will take the initial value plus the change in resistance, which is 10.8, and you will get 130 when rounded to 2SF. I, I follow 2SF because nah, this one 1SF, one this one 1SF. One I mean, debatable, like 120 is unknown. All right, so that's it for the question. Stay calm. Sensing devices on its own without the operational amplifier is pretty doable. Okay, so if you find this, uh, question helpful. We have looked at uh, a strain gauge, a calculation for a strain gauge, and also a uh, explanation for a thermistor. Okay, so good luck with your A2. Like, share, subscribe. Okay, study A2 together with your friends. I wish you the best and I will see you in the next video if you're studying. Take care now. Bye-bye.